Good day, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rehab Gaming. So what we have here today is a Super Game Boy cartridge for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This was designed to be able to play Game Boy games on the Super Nintendo console. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be cracking this thing open, giving it a good thorough cleaning. There's uh, some corrosion here on the bottom pins. We're going to go ahead and take care of that today. Stick around and we'll get right at it. All right, for starters, we're going to go ahead and grab our game bit screwdriver. This is going to be the smaller one. Uh, this cartridge actually has four game bit screws right here that need to be taken out of the cartridge in order to be able to separate the two halves of the cartridge. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we have the screws out, we can go ahead and separate the two halves of the cartridge. You'll notice a couple of clips right here, and then on the very bottom, you don't see any clips. So the best way to separate it is where the connector is. Go ahead and separate the two halves, pull off gently, and then the, both of the halves will separate. The biggest concern, especially with these cartridges, is since they're so old, the plastic becomes brittle. You want to make sure that when you separate them, you're really careful not to break off these two tabs. These tabs actually help align the two cartridge halves together and uh, hold them together uh, with the addition of the four screws to uh, make a solid platform for the card that is inside. So this is going to be the main board for the Super Game Boy. Now, as you can see, you can see a lot of corrosion over here on these four pins. On the underside, there's also some more corrosion on those pins. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the board out. Uh, we're going to hit it with some isopropyl alcohol, see if we can get a lot of that corrosion off of there. Now, looking at these pins, these pins are actually made of copper. And uh, once copper oxidizes, you get this green junk on the pins from the oxidation process. Uh, we're going to go ahead and first hit it with isopropyl and a Q-tip. If we need a little more abrasiveness, we'll hit it with a toothbrush. Just try and knock all that stuff off there. So our main goal here is to preserve these pads as best as possible while cleaning them up just to ensure that they get a good connection. Now, there's these two screws right here and that holds in this guiding slot for the Game Boy cartridge. In order to get this main board out, you have to take out both of these screws using a fine tip Phillips screwdriver. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Now that you have those screws out, you can go ahead and lift up the board, and we'll go ahead and just set that back to the side. Look at the back side. You can see that this far pin over here on this side has quite a significant amount of corrosion on it, and uh, we'll just start working on those pins and making sure that we're careful and not lifting that pad off. So right now, I'm just hitting it with a little bit of 90% isopropyl alcohol. We're just going to try and get this corrosion wetted to help it lift off of the board. And after the alcohol has been on there for a little while, then we'll go ahead and try and scrub on a little bit with the Q-tip, nice and gently, to lift off the corrosion. So while we let those pins soak a little bit, we'll go ahead and uh, 
direct our attention to the rest of them that really don't have much corrosion on it. Those pins are fairly clean. We're getting a little bit off onto the cotton swab. You can see the green from the corrosion where we soaked those other pins. You can also see a little bit of blackish gray gunk on there. That's also uh, oxidation and uh, dust particles that have collected on the pins over time. And we'll just go ahead and clean that off. Turning the board over and taking care of the rest of the pins on the other side. And as you can see, there's a little bit of green in there, and then most of it's going to be like a grayish black kind of color. Uh, the little bit of green is coming from the oxidation up towards the pins closer to the solder mask. The solder mask is going to be this green coating that is on the outside of your main board. And we'll just give it a nice gentle clean over here on this side. So most of the time when you're cleaning pins on a board, the most you'll ever need is a Q-tip, some isopropyl alcohol, and a lot of patience. Now, with these pins, because of how much corrosion is on them, they're going to take a little more work. And if you're going to scrub on them harder just to try and get that stuff off, what you want to do is make sure that you try and go with the direction of the contact pads. That way you minimize the risk of lifting up these contacts from the board. And as I look at it, this pin over here, there is quite a bit more oxidation. That's actually gonna be pin 31. That is used on this cartridge, but the other three pins on this side are not connected to anything on the main board. So it is going to be crucial that we get this pin cleaned off carefully and as thoroughly as possible just to make sure we can get a good connection so this cart is usable. And now that I'm looking at this pin there is significant corrosion damage to the copper contacts. And it looks like it's kind of ate through portions of this pad. That's what we'll do. We'll just hit it with the toothbrush a little bit, get some of that abrasive action on there. And we'll go ahead and hit the rest of these pins just with a quick brushing. We'll polish the pins up a little bit with it. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to check to make sure that that pin over here, pin 31, still has continuity between the base of the pin and this through hole. This through hole is there for this trace to go over to the other side of the board and connect to components that are on the other side of the board. So this is going to be components on one side, traces and through holes on the other. And what happens is, is the signal gets transferred through the through hole input, comes out the other side, goes to whatever component it's supposed to go to. And we're just gonna uh, check the continuity between the pin 
in that through hole to make sure that we still have some sort of signal transfer. So we're going to go ahead and set our multimeter to the diode test mode. Oh, sorry about bumping the camera there. Put one lead on the through hole, other lead on this pin. So where I'm touching the exposed trace, we're getting a signal. However, when I'm touching this corrosion here, we don't get a signal. So we still have enough on this trace for the signal to be going through it and getting to where it's supposed to go. However, this corrosion right here is non-conductive. So, since corrosion is non-conductive, when you stick this into the Super Nintendo cartridge slot and it goes in, if the connector pin in the console itself is sitting on top of this corrosion here, you will not get a good connection. So what we're going to do is just try and scrape a little more of this corrosion off, being super careful not to scrape off anything other than the corrosion. So what I'm doing is I'm actually checking around the outside of this contact to make sure that there is still continuity between the through hole and the outside edge of this contact. The reason why that's important is because even though you have corrosion on this top layer, you still have a connection on this leading edge, which means that there are still conductors on this board that's below the corrosion layer that's still making a viable connection. So as we're getting this corrosion off, we're getting a little better continuity on this pin. But this is one of those things that you just want to take your time with. Do your best to do the minimal amount of damage to this connector. That way you don't cause irreversible... Excuse me irreversible damage to the game cartridge. Now there are some people out there who would suggest using a uh, piece of sandpaper with a really fine grit count to try and knock some of this off. However, it's very easy to use sandpaper and go through the corrosion and actually damage this pad right here. So that's why I'm electing to take my time. 
go over it with some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. A cotton swab is actually abrasive. It is a natural fiber. So it does have some abrasive properties and it allows you a little more control when you're trying to get this corrosion off of there. And it's looking quite a bit better. We'll go back with the multimeter, go over that layer of corrosion. We're getting some continuity. And I'm going to go ahead and work on this a little more. And then after I'm done, since this is going to take a little while, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Alrighty. So what we did here is we took a lot of this corrosion off of this pad. Now to assist me, I was using my probe in the through hole. And then I was kind of scraping across the top of the corrosion just to try and get through that layer of corrosion on there. And while doing so, you expose the layer beneath the corrosion that is conductive. And we have a lot better continuity on this pin. So what I'll go ahead and do, turn it over, get working on the pin on the other side that's kind of in the same condition. You see a lot of corrosion right there. We're going to go ahead and take that off, scrape on it just a tiny bit, just to make sure we don't do anything to damage that trace. That is going to be pin number 62 on this side, and that is also connected to this little trace right here that looks like it goes up to this capacitor. We'll go ahead and check for continuity, and there you go. So that trace goes all the way up to this capacitor right up here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and knock down some of that uh, corrosion and see if we can get a better connection. All right, so here's what we've done. So with this pad right here, it was very corroded. What happened was, is there's a couple of layers. I believe the top layer is going to be gold. The second layer is going to be some type of tin. And then the layer right below that is going to be copper. And what happened with this corrosion, it got underneath the gold and the tin layer and went directly to the copper. So what started happening was, is those layers would flake off as I started cleaning this area. And this corrosion was so bad that I had to go down to the copper with just a very small piece of fine grit sandpaper. I went the direction away from the trace down towards the end here and just very gently with a little bit of rubbing alcohol glided over the top of that to try and remove as much as that corrosion as possible. Now, pin 59, 60, and 61, as you can tell right here, there are no traces that are coming off of these pins. So these pins, we don't have to worry about too much because they're not going anywhere. But pin 62 is connected to this capacitor up here. So this is a pin that is used for the Super Game Boy to function properly. So we got to get as much corrosion off of this pin as we can while doing the minimal amount of damage to the trace and the contact itself. So I ended up going down as far as I'm comfortable with down to the copper layer. I don't want to take any more off because you run the risk of repeatedly taking the, the uh, cartridge in and out of the game system, damaging this trace. So we'll go ahead and put one of our probes on this copper or on this capacitor right here 
where we've already determined that there's a trace leading up from pin 62 all the way over here to the back side of this capacitor. Put our probe on there. We got a little bit of an area where we have some disruption in the signal. That is some corrosion. And then we go further down. This pin right here. And we still have continuity. And it's really good continuity. The only problem that we have is this little portion right here. Now what we can do is leave it like that and allow the repeated motion of placing the cartridge into the system and taking it out, just kind of buffing that away. That way we're not doing any more sanding or anything like that on this contact. Same with the other side. We went ahead and cleaned it up with a touch of sandpaper just to go over lightly on the surface. Now we have really good continuity on this pin to that through hole. There's a little spot right there that has some corrosion. But other than that, that pin is clear. So now that we got those pins cleaned up, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to clean up this connector here for the Game Boy cartridge. And how I like to clean these connectors is using a toothbrush you can actually get the bristles into the back side and just lightly go back and forth if you push too hard you can bend the contacts that are on the back side of this connector and your game boy game won't make proper connection to this connector so a little bit of isopropyl alcohol get your toothbrush go down in there Get some of that gunk out of there. Make sure you wet it generously. This is isopropyl alcohol. It's going to evaporate anyway. And just make sure you get all the way down in there. Get the little dust bunnies out. All the dirt and grime and whatnot. And then just kind of touch up the plastic a little bit. And then once you're done with that... Do a general cleaning on the entire board just to make sure that you get all of the years of gunk off. Do the same with the other side. However, when you're doing this with surface mount chips on a board, isopropyl alcohol will get under those chips. So, what I would suggest just to be safe, even though isopropyl alcohol does evaporate at room temperature, I would allow this to set out for a minimum of about eight hours. If you want to be really safe, you can do 24 if that's how you choose to. Just to make sure that all of the isopropyl alcohol has evaporated from the board and has evaporated from under these chips. Isopropyl alcohol with a low concentration, for example, 60%, uh, 70%, and uh, upwards to 90%, you're not going to have as much of an issue with. 99%, you're definitely not because it's going to evaporate fairly quickly. But as you can see, this is still some uh, isopropyl alcohol that is sitting here on my workspace, and it hasn't evaporated yet. So if you can imagine a little drop of that underneath one of these chips... It's going to take a little while to evaporate, depending on the concentration on the isopropyl alcohol and how much got underneath the chip and your ambient room temperature. So just to be safe, I leave the board set out just for a couple of hours to make sure that, especially when I'm working on surface mount components like numerous chips here, uh, to just to make sure that the isopropyl evaporates and we're not going to run the risk of any short circuits or any hot spots on the chips. So we're done with the board. We're going to go ahead and set that aside. And then we're going to go through uh, cleaning up the case and then snap all this back together. So we'll bring forward our two case pieces. And there's nothing special that you need to really do in order to clean the cases. 
basically the only thing you need is isopropyl alcohol, maybe a toothbrush if you want to get it done a little quicker. If you want to be a little more in depth and try and get in these grooves and make sure that you get in all the little crevices with the Q-tip, um, I recommend going over it with a toothbrush first with isopropyl, then cleaning up with the Q-tip because nine times out of 10, these small bristles here are going to knock out any debris that are in these crevices anyway. Alrighty, so now that we got both sides of this cartridge case cleaned, now I went ahead and wiped off my workstation just so we had a clean surface to work with. We're going to go ahead and reinstall this board. Let's see. Like so. Grab our two Phillips head screws. Put those back in to hold the board down. Then we reinstall the front of the game case lining up these tabs into the two holes in the back and then gently rock it down until it just falls into place if for some reason you feel it bind while you're trying to do that you have something misaligned just check the back two clips make sure that they're in their holes when you're going down and then you could put the screws back in Also make sure when you're putting back these game bit screws, twist the driver counterclockwise until you feel a click. That lets you know that you have dropped into the seat of the original threads. And it makes it a lot easier to screw in and make sure that you're not cross-threading the screws. And there you have it. Super Game Boy, all cleaned up, ready to go, ready to use. Almost looking brand new, except for a little bit of color discoloration over here on the top of the game cart. But other than that, it looks awesome. So, thank you for tuning in and joining us while we tear apart the Super Game Boy cartridge, cleaning up some of this corrosion here on these pins. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this where we tear into game cartridges, um, tear into consoles, components, accessories, and stuff like that, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, Rehab Gaming. Uh, we're going to try and release as many episodes as possible, minimal. We'll try and release one episode per week. And if you'd like to be notified each and every single time that a new episode is put out, Go ahead and click that bell icon. Just make sure that you don't miss out on the new and exciting videos that we have coming out. So, without further ado, thank you for stopping by and have a wonderful day.